I cannot believe my old Tesla just broke again. Now, obviously, even the best of cars break down. And at least I did not get the dreaded high voltage battery failure. I also didn't get a failure in one of the drive units, so that makes me very happy. Instead, my car is experiencing one of the most common issues with older Teslas, and it results in some slightly embarrassing moments. Let me show you. Normally, when you walk up to your Tesla, it will sense you and the door handles would present themselves. If you give a light tuck on one of the handles, it'll electronically unlatch the door, which is super cool. But right now, in order to get into my car, I currently have to do this. And that's just not cool at all. This is all because these fancy Tesla door handles have proven prone to failure over time. And apparently it was my car's turn today. It's completely dead. When the handles fail, they fail in one of two ways, which are actually polar opposite, but result in the exact same thing, if that makes any sense. Let me show you. Either get stuck and won't come out at all, no matter what you do, or they come out, but they won't actually open the door. When they get stuck, you can actually still open the door. It just requires a little ingenuity. But in my case, the opposite happened. The handle comes out and absolutely nothing happens when you try to pull on it. So in order to get into my car, I have to do that embarrassing crawl and clearly that will not do. Tesla no longer makes these door handles. So if you want Tesla to fix the issue, they will need to upgrade you to a newer version of the handle and that will set you back north of $1,000. That seems a little crazy to me. So I'm gonna try to fix it myself. But first, we need to clear out some space in the garage. Two door handle issues are caused by different things. If the door handle doesn't come out, the issue is a small paddle gear which tends to strip over time. And if the handle does come out but still won't open the car, the problem is usually a broken wire for a micro switch that sends power to the door lock actuator. We know the actuator is working because we could hear it engage when we use the inside door handle. So I think it's a safe bet that we have a broken wire. Luckily, you can buy a kit that contains both of those parts and I have one of those kits right here. These are updated versions of the micro switches with reinforced wiring. And this right here is a steel version of the little paddle gear. I paid only $50 for this kit. So if it works and if I can figure out how to put it in, I'm looking at saving almost a thousand dollars today. And that would make me very happy. In order to get to the guts of the door handle, we have to go through a few different layers. First up is the door panel, which is held in place by just a few bolts. We also remove the speaker grill so we can get a better grip. And then we just give it a good tuck and the whole thing comes off. Next, we disconnect all the wiring and then the door panel is ready to be set aside. Behind the door panel is another panel that we need to take off in order to get to the door handle. We also need to remove a few of these stickers in order to gain access to the bolts that actually hold the door handle in place. And finally, we tape up the door handle to prevent it from scratching the door when we pull it out. So now we have access to the door assembly module. Now there are four bolts that hold the assembly in place and three of them are easy enough to get to, but in order to get to the fourth one, we're actually gonna have to connect the door card again and lower the window. Looks like window trim is removed and now we're almost there. I don't know if you can see this, but we need to get to that little 10 millimeter bolt that's right down there. That's the last one that's holding the door assembly in place. And it is not easy to get a hold of, but I think we got it now. And finally, we got the assembly out. And then it's time to gently pry off the waterproof membrane on the back of the assembly. <laughs> this is not what I expected to find in here. There are no micro switches. <laughs> We've just run into a massive problem. It turns out that the handle in my car 
are not original to the car. Instead, they're a newer generation three handles. That means they don't have any of the micro switches or the wiring that normally breaks. And the only way to fix a handle like that is typically to do it through a calibration, which can only happen when the handle is back in the car. So I have to put everything back together again and see if I can get the handle fixed by a calibration. These little discs here that cover the various holes in the door are actually part of the car's safety system. The door is a sealed unit and down here is an airbag pressure sensor. And when someone hits the door, there's an impact that changes the pressure inside of the door. And if these little guys are not sealed, then the switch won't work and the airbag potentially won't go off. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace these old ones because they're just, well, they're not very good, it seems. So I'm replacing them with some newer and better rubber flex seal to create that permanent seal all over the door. After covering up all the holes, the rest is pretty much just the reverse of what we did to take the door apart. The finishing touch is a couple of well-placed punches to make the door clips all snap back into place. The car is mostly back together, but the handle still not working. So we're gonna head over to our friends at EV Fix Me and see if they can diagnose this third generation handle. EV Fix Me is an EV repair shop right here in Newport Beach. They know more about fixing Teslas than most anyone around. And on top of that, they're just super nice guys. So whenever I have an issue with my Tesla, I head straight over to EV Fix Me. And this time when I got there, they hooked up my car to their Tesla diagnostic system and got the calibration process going right away. But things didn't go quite as I had planned. Well, this issue just keeps getting stranger. It appears the actual control module in my upgraded handle is damaged. When we hooked the car up to the Tesla diagnostic system, it showed that the control module didn't even boot up. These handles are supposed to be completely waterproof, but we did have torrential downpours here recently and maybe, just maybe, water got into the control module after all. The good news is that EV Fix Me had a replacement control module in stock and incredibly, this was much cheaper than the original repair kit I bought. This also means that next up is back to the garage and take everything apart one more time. Since I just did all of this, getting the handle out goes fairly quickly. For the second time, we got the door handle completely out. Now, let's open it up again and see if we can get that control module replaced. The control module is just held in place by a couple of screws, so swapping it out was easy. And then we just need to seal the unit back up again. That seemed almost too easy. We got the handle put back together with the new control module in there. And to see if that actually fixed our problem, we're gonna have to put the whole thing back together one more time and then try the calibration of the handle again. I'm actually a little bit nervous about this. We put a lot of work into this and I'm not really sure if this is gonna be the final fix or not. Back at EV Fix Me, they hooked up my car again, put it into service mode, and started the calibration process one more time. And it looks like it might be working this time because the handle is actually moving. In case you can't tell, this is me looking unhappy or at least ponderous. I look this way because we still weren't able to calibrate the door handle. EB Fix Me sent me home with another control module and as if that wasn't enough, they also told me that I should replace the window regulator in the door since the one that's in there likely is about to fail at any moment. I'll show you why that is in just a little bit. So instead of being done with my one project, I now have two things I need to fix. So back to the garage we go. And 
now that I'm an expert at opening up Tesla doors, getting access to the regulator is quick and easy. We do have to remove the window glass in order to get to the regulator, but this is just held in place by a few bolts. Then we can disconnect the main plug for the regulator and out it comes. Here's our old window regulator and we can see that it's about to go bad because this spring here is supposed to be all compressed down. When it springs out like this, it won't be long before the regulator itself fails. And this is what a good one looks like. Notice how the spring is all compressed. So now we just need to get this one back into the car and get the whole thing buttoned up and we should be good to go. The regulator only goes back in in one very specific way and you sort of have to fold it up like a pretzel in order to get it back in there. I did have to remove the speaker as well, but finally the regulator is back in place. Now, there's a little bit of play in these screw holes down here so that you can slide the regulator sort of like back and forth a little bit which in turn then will adjust just how far in the glass comes so we're gonna try to set in the middle and see uh, how that looks and then we'll adjust it from there so we should have everything back together and in working order I'm just gonna test the regulator before we actually put the glass back in to see if it moves the way it's supposed to It looks like we're good. The window glass goes back in and the door handle comes out one more time so I can swap the old new controller with the new new controller. And then we can put the insides of the door back together again, including a new round of the air sealing flex tape patches. We've got the door back together, but it's worse off than when we first started. The handle doesn't even come out anymore. I'm hoping this is just because we still need to marry the new control module to the car. And yes, you guessed it. That means another trip over to EV Fix Me. I got tired of always taking the door apart, so we're rolling uh, slightly less sexy than we're used to. This also means it's uh, even more complicated to open the door at this point, but it certainly is easier than taking the door apart every single time. Shop was able to calibrate the second control unit and in theory it should be working now. I'm about to try it for the very first time. Let's see what happens. All right, here we go. The moment of truth. Let's see what happens. Oh, it worked. It actually worked. That's I'm so excited. That took so long to get that to work, but that is amazing. Now I can finally enter the car again like a regular person. Look at that. The window works perfectly. I'm so glad we have the door back together. The handle works again so smooth, so nice. This experience was a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I'm very glad that I did it. I think I saved maybe close to $1,500 on doing both of these repairs myself. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, give it a like, click that subscribe button, and stay tuned for the next one that I have coming up right here. Or is it here?